so dear students in this lecture we will discuss about the metal complexes in the transmission of energy and in this lecture uh, the transmission of energy in case of plants okay so uh, what are the complexes or the what are the pigments uh, uh, we will discuss about the pigments that are useful in the transmission of energy so so we will discuss about their structure in this lecture so if we'll see the metal complexes actually they play an important role in the energy transfer in photosynthesis process so where the metal complexes involved in the transmission of energy the metal complexes involved in the transmission of energy in the process of photosynthesis and this is the process where the plant absorb the light energy that is the solar energy so the plants absorb the light energy and by absorbing the light energy they uh, take up carbon dioxide from the environment and water from the environment and then these two they all together in presence of light energy they form oxygen and sugar okay and this sugar is uh, help uh, it is the food we eat and we take from the plants so this is the process of photosynthesis so in this photosynthesis the metal complexes plays an important role and what is the important metal complex that metal complex is actually the chlorophyll okay so the chlorophyll is the metal complex which is helpful in the transmission of energy that is the light energy and this light energy is transmitted by this chlorophyll you will see in the photosynthetic reactions so in this lecture we will discuss about the chlorophyll and the uh, some other pigments uh, that are not having the metal center uh, they are useful in the transmission of energy so if we see the chlorophyll chlorophyll is actually a green pigment and this pigment is containing magnesium at the center of porphyrin ring so it is a porphyrin complex okay so i will show you what is the porphyrin ring so in this porphyrin complex uh, uh, this porphyrin complex contains magnesium ion at the center and this is a photosynthetic pigment which absorbs the light energy light energy from the solar system so from the sun this chlorophyll absorbs light energy and transfer it to the system that is to the uh, you will see to some systems in the plants and converts it into the chemical energy so this chlorophyll is a very important green pigment that is present in all green plants all plants so it it converts the light energy into chemical energy during the process of photosynthesis in this slide you will see that the other light capturing pigments so chlorophyll is one of the pigments that is responsible for absorption of light okay so the other pigments that are present in the plants they are carotenoids phycoerythrins and phycocyanin and the process of conversion of light energy into chemical energy is known as photosynthesis so these pigments along with uh, the carotenoids phycoerythrins phycocyanin chlorophyll they are responsible for the conversion of light energy to the chemical energy because these pigments they are light capturing pigments and this process is called as photosynthesis now the chemical energy 
that is produced in the photosynthesis this uh, the process of conversion of light energy into chemical energy is photosynthesis and the produced the generated chemical energy will be utilized in the other process that is respiration okay and now the photosynthesis has two main steps it has two main steps one is organic synthesis and other there is energy storage so these are the two main steps of photosynthesis and this is the general reaction of photosynthesis where you will find that carbon dioxide and water molecules they react together to form this uh, this glucose uh, this sugar and this uh, oxygen and this takes place in presence of light only and the other requirement is the chlorophyll and you will see that this is a redox kind of reaction where you will find this carbon dioxide will reduce to the sugar while this water molecule will oxidize to O2. So this photosynthesis process is a reduction oxidation process which takes place in presence of chlorophyll, in presence of light, where the atmospheric carbon dioxide react with the water to form the sugar and oxygen. In this figure, you will find this is a green plant. Okay, This green plant contains chloroplast. The chloroplast is green in color. You can find this chloroplast. So these chloroplasts, they are green in color. So why they are green in color? They are green in color because of the chlorophyll. Presence of the chlorophyll pigment and the structure of one chloroplast is like this. I will show you the complete uh, this uh, figure and large figure of this chloroplast and you will find that the thylakoid membrane of this chloroplast it contains the photosynthetic pigments so not only the chlorophyll is present in this chloroplast but the other pigments i have uh, told you that are carotenoids the carotenoids they are also present in the thylakoid membrane of this chloroplast so i think you can understand green plant green plant contains chloroplast these uh, there are uh, number of chloroplast you can see and this is the structure of one chloroplast and this chloroplast its thylakoid membrane it contains the the pigments that are photosynthesis photosynthetic pigments that are responsible for the photosynthesis this is the structure of chloroplast now this is the enlarged structure of chloroplast where you can find that this chloroplast's important part is thylakoid so this green part this oval shaped green part is one thylakoid then this is the another thylakoid then this is another thylakoid so you can find that uh, in this bunch one two three four and five so there are five thylakoids okay likewise in this bunch you can see four thylakoids so here you can find two thylakoids so these are the thylakoids and the stake of this thylakoid is called as granum you can find this stake of three thylakoid is granum likewise the stake the stake of five thylakoid is granum so stake of thylakoid is known as granum okay so single unit is thylakoid and the stake is called as the granum okay and uh, the the liquid uh, present in this chloroplast in which these uh, granum they are present the aqueous liquid is called as stroma okay so this yellow colored liquid is stroma okay again i am uh, telling you this is this is thylakoid 
and stake of thylakoid is called as granum and these thylakoids and granum they are present in a, an aqueous medium and then aqueous fluid is called as stroma okay so this is the main structure you have to remember about the thylakoid you have to remember about the stroma and you have to remember granum you have to learn only three things that is thylakoid the smallest unit then they together will form granum and then granum these thylakoids and granum they are present in the stroma now if we talk about the synthesis of chlorophyll then we will find that the biosynthesis of chlorophyll involves more than 12 steps okay so they involve more than 12 steps and after the synthesis the chlorophyll will assembled in the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast so i have told you that the chlorophyll and the other pigments they are present in the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast i am showing you again so this is thylakoid and thylakoid has a membrane and this thylakoid membrane it has the pigments the photosynthetic pigments and one of the pigment is chlorophyll so these thylakoid membrane you can see these are green in color so they have the pigments like chlorophyll and carotenoids now we will study the structure of chlorophyll so if we see the chlorophyll there is a porphyrin ring in the chlorophyll okay so this is the porphyrin ring and the basic unit of porphyrin is porphyrin this is porphyrin where you will find there are 1 2 3 and 4 pyrrole rings and these pyrrole rings they are attached via methane bridges this is the methane bridge ch double bond one side double bond and other side single bond so this is the methane linkage and this is the alpha carbon of this pyrrole ring so this pyrrole ring is attached with the another pyrrole ring at the alpha carbon atom via methane linkage and there you can see there are the alternative double bonds in this porphyrin porphyrin ligand and this porphyrin ligand is actually a heterocyclic macrocyclic organic compound so it has four pyrrole rings and in this four pyrrole rings you will find two nitrogen they are tertiary and two nitrogen they are secondary okay so when they form bond with the metals actually this porphyrin is a very unstable compound and if these pyrrole rings has some substituted groups you can see here r1 r2 r3 r4 r5 r6 r7 and r8 then it is called as porphyrin so substituted porphyrin is called as porphyrin and in this porphyrin the difference with the porphyrin is that there are the substituents in this uh, in the pyrrole rings of porphyrin ligand here all the uh, the groups are h while here the groups may be vinyl may be acetyl may be methyl may be ethyl so these groups may vary and uh, due to this substitution this ring is called as porphyrin ring and in this porphyrin ring these two secondary Uh, these groups they remove the proton during the formation of bond with the metal center so it is a tetradentate ligand one nitrogen two nitrogen three and four so it is a tetradentate macrocyclic ligand and metal will fix here in the form of uh, dianion uh, dication because uh, this can remove one hydrogen atom from here and one hydrogen atom from here so two hydrogen uh, ions they will remove in the form of protons so this ring will become dianion so that 
डाइकेटाइन मेटल कैन फॉर्म बॉन्ड विद दिस पॉर सो इफ a metal cation will form bond with this metal porphyrin porphyrin then this is known as metalloporphyrin okay first this is porphyrin without any substituent with substituent it is porphyrin and when metal attached to this metal cation will attach to this then this is called as metalloporphyrin now we will discuss about two kinds of chlorophyll chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b and if we see the structure of chlorophyll a only the difference is the substituent one of the substituent and in chlorophyll you will find a modified porphyrin ring okay so you can see here modified porphyrin ring you will find here one this kind of substituent here so this is called as modified porphyrin ring and this substituent is different in case of chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b so in case of chlorophyll a it is methyl group and here you will find one of the group is containing the phytol tail okay so in this case the porphyrin ring is the head of the molecule and it is the light absorbing molecule because it has conjugated double bonds so due to the presence of these conjugated double bonds it can absorb the light energy okay so conjugated double bond they causes the absorption of light the hydrocarbon tail which is phytol this interacts with the hydrophobic region of proteins inside the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast because the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast is proteinous any membrane it is formed of lipids and proteins so the membrane becomes hydrophobic in nature so in that hydrophobic membrane this tail portion it binds so this chloroplast bind to the thylakoid membrane via this phytol tail chlorophyll b so only the difference is the presence of this group so here the group is cho while in case of chlorophyll a this group is methyl group the rest of the structure is same and likewise the chlorophyll b also binds to the thylakoid membrane through this phytol tail thylakoid membrane and this is beta carotene so in case of beta carotene you will find no metal ion so this is not a metal complex simple a uh, hydrocarbon compound uh, so this is not a metal complex but this carotenoids or this beta carotene is helpful in the transfer of energy is present at the center of this modified porphyrin ring and attached to the nitrogen atom of the four pyrrol rings likewise in case of chlorophyll b also you will find the same structure in the center of this uh, porphyrin ring so this chlorophyll a it finds it is present in all plants and algae this chlorophyll b it is uh, present in the green algae and this carotin is present in the uh, the all uh, almost all the plants especially this chlorophyll b is present in the green algae and uh, small amount is also present in the higher plants so if we see the absorption pattern you can see that there are conjugated double bonds in each pigment so here the conjugated double bonds they are present in the porphyrin ring 
and chlorophyll b also it is present in the porphyrin ring and in this B beta carotene uh, uh, the double bonds alternative double bonds are present so due to presence of these conjugated double bonds they can easily absorb light but they absorb the light in the different uh, magnetic radiation range so you will find that these all these are colored actually so these carotenes they are generally uh, yellow in color so the color they absorb is not the color of the pigment but the color they transmit is the color of that compound so in case of chlorophyll a the chlorophyll a absorbs blue violet region light so this is the absorption spectra of chlorophyll a this chlorophyll b it absorbs at red blue region so this uh, this is the this large dashed line is the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll b and carotene absorbs actually blue green and violet region light and a small dashed line is representing the absorption spectra of beta carotene so if we see that in case of chlorophyll a blue violet light is absorbed in case of chlorophyll b blue red blue light will absorb so these light will absorb and the transmitted light is generally green so they appear green in color in case of beta carotene you will find the absorbed light is blue green or violet region so you can see the absorbed light is green so it will transmit generally yellow light so they appear yellow in color present in the uh, in the plants that are responsible for the absorption of light due to the absorption of this light they convert this light energy to chemical energy and the process is known as uh, photosynthesis and the most important pigments we have to discuss about the metal complexes so the metal complexes that are responsible for the absorption and transmission of energy light energy they are the chlorophylls chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b these are the pigments which are present in the thylakoid membrane of the plants and they are metal complexes the other pigment which is present in the thylakoid membrane is carotenoid and that is also helpful in the transmission of energy so these are the three main pigments which are responsible for the transmission of energy generally the energy light energy they absorb and transmit and convert this light energy into the chemical energy so this is all about uh, the part 1 of metal complexes in transmission of energy in the next lecture we will discuss the mechanism of photosynthesis uh, by uh, by these pigments by these metal complexes so thank you very much